Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, I'm going to explain you how to use the repository APIs in Pega. First thing is, I wanted to make a video on the connect file. That is exactly opposite to the service file. In service file, we get an incoming file, we process the file. In connect file, we can create some file and put it into some location. But with Pega 8.7, we don't have this connect file. We have to use only these repository APIs. First, what is a repository here? A repository can be referred to any kind of location. It can be like a local location. It can be mounted on your server file path location or it can be also into some kind of cloud storage. Like for example, the Azure blob storage or it can be like the Amazon S3. So it can connect to different types of storages. Repository refers to some kind of storage location and you can have some files over those storage locations. Now with these APIs, what we can do is we can connect to the repository and do different operations. So what are the operations we can perform using these repository APIs? As you can see, I'm just listing down the top five actions or the APIs which you can use to perform different operations. First is you can create a new folder. We already saw in the previous videos, the file listener, it creates the completed folder, the repository folders, right? It uses this repository API. So PX new folder can create you a new folder. PX new file, of course, it is going to create you a new file. So you can create a new file into some specific repository, a specific file name with a specific content. You can provide the source of the file name using some kind of HTML stream or it can be also base64 encoded string. Different values can be passed into the file and then you can also get the file. So if a file already exists in the system and if you want to get the content of the file, you can use this px get file and px list files is going to list the list of files that are already existing into some kind of directory. It is more like a read only data page where you can browse or read the files and finally px delete, you can delete a file or a folder. That is why you don't see the name px delete file. It is just px delete. You can either delete a file or you can delete an entire folder. So in this video, I'm just going to use some of these APIs to show you different operations which you can perform. Let's go to Disney Studio and find it out. So here I have logged in into the Disney Studio. And first step to use the repository API is you need to have some repositories first. So you need to configure a repository instance and where you can do that is under the sysadmin. If you go to sysadmin and then scroll down, you will find the repository. Just click on it to find the list of repositories that are out of the box configured. And I see currently there are two repository instances configured. You can also check to see the content of the repositories. Now I'm going to create a new repository to use a new file system path location into my own laptop or into my own server path. So before creating a repository, I can also do one step. I can go to my server path. So I'm going to use the same Tomcat directory, the same directory which I used for the file listener. So here I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it as climbs repository. So this repository is where I'm going to create files. I'm going to access files. I'm going to delete the files. So this is the repository name and the location of this repository is this. Okay. Now Let's go to Pega and configure a repository and let's connect this location with the repository instance in Pega. Now get back here and then let's start with creating a new repository. Use the create menu, sysadmin and then scroll to the repository. Create a new repository. Just provide a name. I'm going to use the same kind of name. I'm going to say climbs repository here and then do create and open. So here it's a very simple definition which you have to configure. The first thing is you have to identify what type of repository type it is. Use this select pick list and there you will find the list of supported repository types by Pega. As you can see, JFrog Artifactory, Amazon S3, File System and Microsoft Azure. I'm going to just use my local file system. So I'll use this option and under this you can do the configuration. So based on your selection here, the configuration varies. So I'm going to use the file system. So I have to provide only the resource path or the file location or the file directory path that is totally fine. And if you are using the same kind of configuration in your projects, maybe you have to specify the relative path. You don't want to entirely specify the entire directory here. But for now, for my local machine, I'm going to specify the entire path here. 
So this is going to be my path. Now once you define the resource path, just do a save. This will already do some kind of validation. You can very well do the test connectivity to check if you are able to access the path. Yes, we are able to access. This can be really handy when you want to connect to some kind of cloud storage. Like if you want to connect to Microsoft Azure, then you need to have some kind of authentication profile configured to connect to the Microsoft Azure. Now let's also validate the repository. If you click on validate repository, it checks all these data APIs actually. It checks if something exists, new folder, new file, list files, get file, delete file, it checks everything here. So all the service connection looks good here. So this repository connection is now totally connected with my server path location. Now let's use these repository APIs to start with doing some action. The first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one file and try to get the content of the file. That is my first action. So let me first place a file here. So here I just placed a simple file, a climbs request input file. You can find the content of this file. It has a simple climbs request input, which we used in the last video, the same climbs request, climbs someone customer details and all these details are there. Now I want to get this content into my clipboard. So how to do that is you can use the get files API. So let's go to Destiny Studio and search for D underscore PX get file. So I get this one px get file just open it first thing what you can do is go to the history tab there you will find the big description big usage how to use it you can see there are different types of parameter it supports you know you can use the string as well as the stream we are going to use only the string here and then you can also see how to use it like they explained everything in some five steps so this is very simple if you look at the parameter you can easily understand first we have to provide the repository name the newly created repository name i'm going to provide and then you have to specify the file path including your file name and then you can say whatever response you want to get what type of content you need to get from the file i'm going to run this data page and quickly show you so my repository name is going to be climbs repository let me copy the name here and then file path so what will be my file path here so as you can see in the climbs repository we configured till the end i also added a slash here just now and then if you do a test connectivity so it looks fine. So this slash is also okay. The main reason why I did this is I don't want to add a slash here. Instead, I can just provide the file name. So what is the file name for me? Climbs request input.xml. So this is the file name. And finally, what type of response type you want to get? I'm going to say string and everything should be in caps as mentioned into the history. As you can see here, it asks us to either use string or stream. I'm going to use the string. Now let's run this data API and check the results. It already got me the result py contents properties holding the entire base 64 formatted data. As you can see the py contents property is like the response property which will be filled with the contents of the file in the base 64 encoded format. So this is my write data. I'm just going to copy it here. Now let's try to decode this data and find what is the content. We should verify that, right? The file contents are perfectly parsed, are perfectly encoded and decoded. Let's do that. So we can just search for base64 decoder. We already have a website and then just paste it. I already copied it. If you just paste here and then do a decode, you should see the file content. You see, this is the exact file content which we used. So we are able to get it in a base 64 encoded format. We get it into a PEGA property. Now let's try one more thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try for creating a new file. To create a new file, px new file. So open this one. The one main difference between this get and new is get is like it is going to be a read only. It just gets the data, but new it is like a savable page because we have to create a new file. So it is configured as a savable data page. So you cannot run it and do a savable data page. You have to use some kind of activity for it. First, let's check out the history tab. You can see it is well written. It accepts an input either py content or py stream. I'm going to use the same content which I got from the previous API and then I will create a new file into here. So the parameter you have to specify the repository name file path. And the py content is not parameterized, but you have to pass it into the step page. Let's go to the activity and let's try to save this data page. So here I have just created a test activity to test the changes. But before running these APIs, I want to show you one more activity which can really give you some idea. 
just search for this activity px copy from repository it helps to copy the data from one repository into another so what it does is it uses a lot of apis so you can find the usage of different apis into this one activity so you can see here it uses the get file it gets the data and then it also creates a new file so this is how they create a new file so they use the step page and then they add some property in, into this data page like the py content and then they use the saved data page so i want to use the same kind of thing i want to use the same parameter so what i'm going to do is i'm going to prepare this content so d underscore px new file name what will be my repository name i'm copying this repository name climbs repository so i can just remove this one and specify the climbs repository and what should be my new file name here so i'm going to create climbs new request okay so this will be my file name i will specify it as xml so this is the data page which i want to use so i'm going to copy and paste it into the activity so here i'm going to use this as a step page that is the first thing you have to do and then just make sure you add this file into the pages and class i think i already did that let me verify that i already did it is of class embed repository file you can also find the same thing here if you go to this activity and we see they specified everything into pages and class so definitely we have to do that okay now this data page gets loaded i have to set a property here i have to set a property set and then i have to specify py contents right that is what it was mentioned so i'm going to specify py contents as the content which i copied from my previous file so previous file using get file i already got this base64 decoder content so i can use the same content so technically it is going to create a new file with the same content into a new name right so that's what i'm going to do now so i'm going to copy this and then paste it inside here so this will be my py content and the next step is you want to save this data page you go here and then just do this and use save data page let's do a save so it threw me some error let's check what's the error here okay xml file name you should mention it in under the double quote because you have the dot inside so make sure you specify it inside a double quote i think after that the error will be gone let's verify it do a save okay now a different error comes in let's see what's the error now oh i'm sorry i have to specify this data page into the method parameter i cannot specify into the step page so what i can do is i can just do a control x for now paste it here and then i have to pass the parameter as well first let me remove this entire content and then go here and specify the parameter i'm going to use the parameter like this and then climbs request dot xml like this i thought it's a obj save sorry for save data page you have to specify the method parameters and you can also do a right now do a save again a final issue what is the final issue because you have to specify it under the double quote so we are done with all these errors now our activity is ready to create a new file with the content which we got from the previous file let's verify it there is only one file the climbs request input now you can start your tracer for this activity and then click run do a run we got a success already so tracer should be capturing already all this detail but before that let's check here and i saw climbs new request a new file got created it also has 1kb the same size so definitely the content should be there the content is there climbs new request a new file got created with the right content which we passed as an input okay now let's check out the tracer and see what are the rules that are involved for behind this as you can see it uses a saveable data page right so de definitely the activity should be configured into the data page itself so it's better we can also check from the data page let's go to the data page px new file and go here scroll down that check the activity that is behind the data save so you can see the java code behind it that helps to save the file or something so this is like main activity that is responsible for doing the save or creating a new file So now we know how to get a file content how to create a new file let's finish this video by seeing how to delete a file just search for delete px delete there you will find the page just open the px delete don't open the px delete file just open the px delete go to the history tab you don't find anything i thought pega would have documented already but it is okay this is again a very simple thing you have to provide the repository name the file path 
and recursive delete because this can delete a file name or it can delete a folder so in case of folder you have to delete all the files into the folder so in that case you can use the recursive delete but in my scenario i'm just going to delete only the file so not a problem i'm just going to specify only the first two parameters let's test it run specify the repository name it's climbs repository and the file name the new file which i created climbs new request i'm going to delete it delete okay just checking the file exists climbs new request let me also delete that file so that i don't have any kind of locking or maybe okay now i have to delete this let's do a run let's check i already see py deleted is true let's go here file disappeared file got deleted so you can also delete a folder like this by this way you can use different repository apis to perform different actions mostly you can use this to create a new file by providing the right stream content or the base 64 encoded data i hope now you understood the usage of these repository apis and how it can replace the connect file rule this will be the final video on this file processing module i hope you learned a lot in this file processing we talked about file processing like a service provider we were able to get an incoming file then we processed it we created a new case and then at the end we were also able to create a new file into some repository location see you in the next module